In this video, we'll build on the previous video we had by instead of turning a servo based on a gyro value, we're going to turn the robot. So just like before where the, gyro, the servo hunted to a gyro position, this time the robot is going to go to that position. We're going to do this in two parts. The first part is just going to try to stay at zero. The second part, you'll be able to enter in a heading and it'll go to that heading so you can turn using a gyro. So here, we're still going to have Spartan Core. We've got insert or include core.h. We'll still have Spartan Core. We'll still have PCB. We still have a gyro. We don't have a servo anymore. So we won't have servo position, but instead, we'll have turn speed. So this is going to be how fast we're going to have the robot turn. Now, the slower your robot turns, the more controllable it is, the more accurate it is. The faster your robot turns, the more inaccurate it's going to be once it gets to that position. So this is the power at which to turn. We'll still have absolute. This is the reading from the gyro. And we'll add in one more thing, which will be the target. To start out with, our target's going to be 0. We'll have PCB delayed start servo. Oh, we don't have that anymore, so we'll take that away. Seal will begin. We aren't going to be feeding back anything because our robot is going to be moving. So if we like, we can take out that serial. And because we're taking out serial, we can also take out this down here. Now, you can also leave it in and feed back your uh, gyro value. Although, it's going to be kind of hard to move your robot. You'll have to do some payroll management. But I encourage you to try that out. We'll wait one second before calibrating the gyro to make sure that after you press the program control button, the robot's not still moving. And then... We're going to have another delay afterwards, and this is just to wait again between calibrating the gyro and moving. Um, it works fine without it, but then just to, to step through all the processes. Inside the void loop, we still are going to update the absolute val uh, variable with the get absolute function. And then if absolute is greater than zero, we're still going to do something. If absolute is less than zero, we're still going to do something else. Um, we're not going to check if the server position is zero. Uh, so before, the servo has a limited range from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. Now, the robot can turn around forever. So uh, we don't need to check where the robot motors are. And here is where we're going to turn. So here, changing server position was moving the servo. Now we're going to move the robot. So instead of saying change server position, we're going to actually turn the robot. And to do that, we need to set the power of the motors. So we're going to say core dot motor speed core m zero, and the power is going to be negative turn speed. Same thing down here. Motor speed, this one's going to be core.m1, and this will just be turn speed. So these will be going the same amplitude of power, but in opposite directions. Now, one other thing that we would actually want to change here is that now that we're using target as zero, we're going to change if absolute is greater than target. That way we could say our target is 90, so it stays at 90 degrees. So we're going to change the same thing down here, target. And then here, server plus plus, is just moving the server in the opposite direction. So we're going to want to turn our robot, oops, we're going to want to turn our robot in the opposite direction. So I'm going to copy our turn code here, and then I'm going to swap where my negative sign is. Right now, the robot's always going to be turning. So if we were to run this program, which you can do, if you want to plug into your robot, you can run this program just as it is and see what happens. I'll wait for a little bit. Pause this video. Go try that out. Now what's happening is that the robot is going to turn one direction. If absolute is greater than target, that's if the robot's on the left, it's going to turn to the right until it gets to the right of of zero, and then it's going to turn to the left, and then it's going to turn to the right, and then it's going to turn to the left, and then it's going to turn to the right, as long as it's you know bouncing back and forth between zero. So we actually want a spot where the robot stops. You can see in the intro video we had a, a point where if I 
nudge the robot, it would turn, and then it'd stop on zero. So instead of just turning, 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 we only want to do this while the uh, value is not zero. So we're going to add in, we're going to do this with a while. So we're going to add in a while, while the absolute value of absolute minus target is greater than zero, we want to turn. And the direction we turn is based off of if absolute is greater than target or if absolute is less than target. I'm going to format my code here so it looks nice. And then when it is within, uh, when, when it does equal zero, then we'll want to stop. So down here, we're just going to, instead of turn speed, we just want it to be zero. This number here is the, the, the acceptable distance from zero. So right now, we're going to do this as long as the absolute and our target, target right now being zero, are within zero of each other. So only if our absolute heading or our absolute z integrated value is zero will we stop the motors. Now we could also say one, we could say two, we could say three, we could say 15. And that means that when the robot is within 15 degrees of zero, then it'll stop. So this will give you a 30 degree range, actually a 31 degree range, of where the robot will uh, be okay with stopping. But with a Spartan and going slow, uh, it, it can get down to zero degrees. Now if you ramp this up to, let's say, 100% uh, 100 turn speed, well, the robot's going to go faster. Then you may need to say, well, we'll need to be within three degrees of zero, not zero degrees of zero. Down here, server target, we don't need that. Inside this while loop, we um, do not update our absolute value. So if here we update our get absolute, we'll need to update that again after the if statements. So every time the robot is moving, we'll need to update that, that value. And that's it. So we will upload this to our program, our, our robot, and make sure it works. Something's wrong here. I've got, well, absolute, absolute minus target is greater than zero. Target was not defined. Ooh. Ha, 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 ha. T-A-R-G-E-T. -E I misspelled target there. We'll try this again. So I downloaded my program to the robot, or uploaded the program to the robot, and I found that when it gets to zero, it kind of bounces back and forth a couple of times. So if you take that zero, like we're talking about the acceptable range it can get to, I'm going to change that to a 1, and then I'm going to upload my program again. So I'll say upload and see if that uh, is, is more elegant. Now it bounces back just a little bit. I'm okay with that. If you don't want to bounce back at all, you can make it 3, and then it will, or 2, or 3, or 4, and, and then it'll get to that acceptable range, and it'll, that range will be big enough that once it stops, it'll still be inside of that range. That's it for part one. In part two, we're going to make this whole thing a function. It should be super quick to do. Now, let's say that in your program, we'll say in void setup, we want to turn quite a few times. So we want to say, well, I want to turn to 90, and then I want to turn to, we'll say, negative 45 and I'm going to put in a delay of one second here, 1,000 milliseconds. And actually make this pretty, we'll say 45. So let's say I want to turn 45, turn to 45 degrees, and then to turn to negative 45 degrees and stop between each one. To do that, I would need to make this whole function two times and put delays between each one. And that's a lot of code. So instead of doing that, we're going to make a function. We're going to come down here 
And after our whole program, we're going to say turn absolute, and it's going to take in an integer. We're going to call it target. And inside of here, we're just going to put our entire routine here. Everything that's inside of a void loop, we're just going to put it down there. So we're going to update our absolute. We're going to go into our while statement as long as it is outside of one degree of our target, of our absolute, of our target, yes. Um, and then depending on if absolute is greater than or less than target, we'll turn in one direction or the other. Then we'll update the uh, absolute value again, and if it's still outside of our acceptable range, we'll keep turning. When it's done, we'll stop, and then we'll go on to the next thing, which would be a delay. So then in our void loop, we don't need any of this stuff. And in fact, for kicks, let's keep doing this over and over again. So instead of doing that here, we'll do it in our void loop, so then we'll repeat those two turns over and over. I'm going to auto-format my code so it looks nice, and then upload my program. That is as simple as making this function is. That works. It's excellent. Now, there's one thing that we didn't do, which can make our robot stop sooner. Using, uh, while using the motors, we can set our motors to brake or float or coast. And if we set them to brake, once we tell the motors to go to 0% power, then the motor is going to stop sooner. So we'll do this up after delayed start. We'll enter that in here. And then that's the only change I'm going to make. I'm going to say upload again. And once the robot tries to stop, it should stop closer to where we actually want the target to stop. So it should cl stop closer to 45 degrees and negative 45 degrees. Much better. And now that would actually be good for the part one as well. Uh, that way you can have a smaller value here, smaller acceptable range, and it won't be bouncing back and forth. That's it. In the next video, we'll be making a program that has the robot go straight and uses that gyro to ensure it goes in a straight line instead of curving off to one direction or the other. And if you bump the robot, it'll line back up and continue straight where it was going before.